So guys in the last video did as we saw we were we tried to execute this query and uh, let me cut uh, get back to my this this was just a bit of a uh, bit of a mistake from my side and I side of talks so once we ran this query and uh, let me put that back and even if we don't if we are not passing this anything inside this query was still going to get executed was getting executed and that is just because we forgot something here inside our this uh, schema where we have inside a type definition of the post that uh, this is required value so we have to put an explanation mark over there in order to specify that this is required you cannot access this route until you pass this over there so now if I go ahead and create this one post for and now if I go ahead and create this now we are getting this but if we just simply cut this out and create this we are getting okay so now this is an error actually an error now if I get it we are getting that this required create new post argument new post is required that was not provided so it is also giving me all the messages and everything so for now I'm just gonna get rid of this thing and also gonna get rid of this payload and for now we'll require this payload in order to or let's get rid of it don't worry about that so now this is fine for us and now we'll go ahead and get started with our this thing uh, create a uh, deletion of ed editing a post as well as a deleting a post so we'll simply say edit post by ID and this will take updated post and this will be again of type new post or instead of writing this as a post input post, new post I'm gonna say it input post input and this new also I'm gonna get rid here and so basically this is an input and we are specifying that these are the post input and we'll update our post and the updated post will return our updated post so we are gonna save that and also it will look for an ID field since MongoDB automatically creates an ID field once the, once the item is registered to the collection we will be needing an ID so we will simply say ID and also GraphQL comes up with this ID ID have an additional field so this is specifies this and also gonna add the ID field to our post post object post schema that we have created at the bottom so now if I go ahead and run this query so from our docs I'm gonna copy the first query paste it and instead of this get all posts and if I register this ID also I want this back so that now if I run this now we have this ID and this field is now auto created by MongoDB and the backend while saving the data so I'm gonna copy this back and gonna go to my this schema and gonna replace this with this one so these are the fields that we can get back and here we have to pass these fields otherwise we won't be able to create our post so that's how it works and with that all set we're gonna go and start working with this edit post by ID so I'm gonna copy this and now we have to since again it's kind of mutation only so inside a post resolver just below this function I'm gonna register that too and this will again take some time so that's why we'll do that too and then it will take updated post since this argument was passed inside the updated post so that will destructure from the arguments and now again we will require a post model from our context so we are extracting again and then again I'm gonna use that this uh, asynchronous function in order to update our post by ID and also this is 
getting receiving ID field. So we're gonna just extract that too from our uh, arguments, whatever we have passed inside this resolver from here. So now if I go ahead, we have to run a query here. And the way we can do that by simply saying let. And this query is quite hard, so quite difficult query. One of our, actually, so we'll simply say update. And actually, we'll say, uh, we'll simply say edited post equal to, and now this is gonna be asynchronous function. That's why it will take some kind of time. So that's why we are specifying with the await keyword. And that await keyword, we'll look into that. But for now, post dot find by ID and update function. So this is a graph. Uh, this is actually standard. Our this part. What do we have? This mongoose MongoDB mongoose uh, function. And we'll look into that ID. We'll pass that ID over here. And then we'll pass the new value. So we'll actually spread out the our updated post. And also whatever we have passed inside that will and we'll also pass another thing so new we'll set it to true just a second guys something went wrong with my other thing So yeah, so we'll save this. So this will give me the edited post, the updated post. And once we are done, we are gonna return back whatever we have. So return, edited post. And now if I save it, I'm gonna go to my GraphQL playground that we have here. And we're gonna run our mutation here edit post by ID so I like to name it edit post by ID and then we'll have an updated post and within that we are going to have our title and this will be again a type of input that we had here post input so we can have that too so we'll simply say edit title of post let's say let's edit the second post that we have and this will be our dated one we have the content too so that content will be let's keep it same we don't want to edit that content put it over there post to editor okay let's edit that too And I think, or let's make it for the first one, we don't have the featured image. So let's say for example, we wanna add feature image later. So that's kind of editing a post. So I'm gonna pass that featured image. I'm gonna look for one from here. Let me copy, this looks nice actually. Copy image address and pass that address over here. And in return, I wanna get back title of the post and the ID of the post and also the content of the post as well as featured image too. Let's create, get everything and also look for the updated ad field as well as created ad field that we have. So let's edit this post and this fold edit by post was argument was not defined. So let me first verify it. Since we didn't pass our ID of the post that we wanted to get back so I will simply say pass ID and that will be a string for now and I can get my post from here. So our first post that we had, we had this ID, object ID. I'm gonna copy this ID. I'm gonna go to my playground, pass it and let's run our query. Find the find post, post find by ID and update. Okay, so I forgot to check for that find and update so basically what went wrong was this find and update actually this was the 
this was the mongoose function find my id and update so now once we are done with that now you can see we have post one edited and now if i go ahead and look for this query again query all posts and that get all post and from that I want to title content updated at created at featured image and also the ID of that post run that query all post and now you can see that we have our post one is edited and if I look into the database rerun this command and now if I look in here you can see our first post is already edited okay that's a lot of data yeah so the, you can see that featured image has been added to our first post that we created uh, earlier in the video so I'm gonna quickly copy this and also you can pass it as a parameter so which I like so I'm gonna pass it as a function so firstly it will take an ID that will be of ID field then also it's gonna take updated post post um, actually not this this will be a variable so we are specifying that it's a variable and we'll define it as a post new post actually it will be post input and that shouldn't be null so now instead of this whole part I'm gonna get rid of it and I'll simply say updated post and here we can simply refer it with our ID that we have added and now in our query variables what I'm gonna do is gonna create that so it will take an ID and that let's edit this post to we have inside here so let me quickly copy this ID grab this ID paste it there then we have updated post and that's gonna be an object so let me it will have a title have a title and the title will be post to update it and then we have a content field so GraphQL playground knows what kind of things that we are achieving we want we want to ask it so let me quickly copy this one paste it over there edit it I'm just adding these keywords so everything just looks fine and uh, for the image that's for fine for now and let me execute this query so edit post and now you can see that post 2 has been updated if I fetch all the post you can see this post 2 is also now updated even if I'm looking to the database clear my screen okay like actually what I'm gonna do shorten this just a bit so that everything look, comes nicely on a single page I run this query and this is a post to and that has been edited also inside our database so this is now with all that said we are done with our edit post mutation so I'm gonna cut this from here too and this will keep on using I'm gonna paste it at the bottom and actually let me cut this out so that I can format that properly inside our playground I have verified that thing uh, let me verify yeah that's fine actually it looks nice no worries so I'm just gonna add it at the bottom and now you can see everything is working fine so now it's time to go ahead and start deleting a post by an ID so this video is gonna be all about achieving this basic crud so I'm gonna also create a, another mutation called delete post by ID and we'll pass our ID as a parameter we'll achieve accept that and that should be an ID type of post and this will return me some kind of message so post notification I'm gonna call it so since we don't have to send our post back as it was deleted 
ಯಾವ ಸಿಂಪಲ್ ಐ ಸೇ ಚೈಪ್ ಪೋಸ್ಟ್ ನೋಟಿಫಿಕೇಶನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಎನ್ ದಾರ ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ಮೆಸೇಜ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಾರ್ ಮೆಸೇಜ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಲೆಟ್ ಸೇ ಸ್ಟ್ರಿಂಗ್ ಐ ಕೆನ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ನಲ್ ಇಟ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಅ ಸ್ಟ್ರಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅವರ್ ಸಕ್ಸಸ್ ವೆರಿಯಬಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಾರ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಅ ಬೂಲಿಯನ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬೂಲಿಯನ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಟು ಹಿಯರ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಟು and also it will return the id of the deleted post so i'll simply say id and that boolean and everything is there now this will return this kind of post notification from from the back end and that cannot be null so let me quickly save it oops i need like to space out things so now we will go ahead and create this resolver so we have registered this resolver inside our mutation of our schema of our type definition of the post and now i'll create this resolver and this will take first argument and the second argument we are extracting our id and also we are want to access our post model from our context and then it will be an error function so I forgot that and this might take a moment because it has to go and interact with the database so it will automatically look for that and now what we can do left deleted post equal to await post dot find by id and delete so instead of this update we'll delete and we'll pass that id over here and then we return our message oh come on so that message will be our your post is deleted and success variable will become true since it was a boolean and also we want to mention that id of the deleted post so that we can splice it off in the front end so we'll simply say deleted post dot id and let's see what happens um this has automatically formatted my code and uh, in our our application is working just fine so we can go here and create a, a mutation query delete post by id and now i'm going to use this direct function part where we're going to get to that function part delete post by id we're going to get back id we also want to get back message we also want to get back our success so that we can put some kind of conditional and then this will take an id as a variable that should be of type id and then it will now you can see that our graphql has started saying this argument is required by but not provided so we'll provide that here by simply saying id equal to dollar id and now i'm going to get rid of this and i'm just want to delete the second post that we have here so this post to update it the post with the title post to update it and now if i run this and now you can see that post is deleted so if i run the first query and now you can see this this then be no longer see a post to over there so it's all about like handling basically we are doing nothing much here we are just getting out the things so, but the things will get more interesting most of the stuff we are doing just like a rest api that what we used to do in the rest api but the things will get start getting interesting when we'll get into the directives and issuing tokens and authentication that will be that needs a lot of code and patience so that took me quite a bit to figure out and but with all that said we are good to uh, we are done with our crud a basic crud application the only part which we are left with is simply getting a single post by the id and the bonus of the application we will get in the last video that's the pagination how you can handle the pagination using the graphql on the server side so we'll get into that in the last video so get post by id so i'm going to 
get a single post by ID and this will take an ID and ID should be not and then this will return a type of post and that cannot be null again ID cannot be null and the post also cannot be null so now we're gonna register that inside our query because we are not dealing with any kind of mutation inside of a database or something like that on the server side so this would just work fine and then we have to register that inside our query field of our post resolver so I'm gonna say post ID and this will be again an asynchronous call because we have to interact with the database then from our arguments we'll extract our ID and also from our context that we have provided we will access our post model and then from here we'll simply say let post equal to await post.find by id function and we'll directly pass our id over here so this is nothing much to do over here but we'll return our post back and now if i save it it has automatically formatted and now i'm going to run this run this query so this will be nothing more just going to copy the same query over here oops post by id and then again i'm going to pass the same thing dollar id pleasure of type id and here i'm going to say get post by id actually make it by in our resolver in our query definition to get post by id so it looks quite nice and quite understandable and now here I'm gonna pass our variable so that variable is here and we're gonna reference that ID over here and let's pass that run that query you cannot query field on a post type did you mean post ID so I think our GraphQL was not able to handle that on the fly and now let me quickly run that post by ID cannot query field post by ID okay so this I just I forgot to change inside the resolver too so copy this save this part I forgot to save that too I'm gonna paste it and then yeah now you can see now it server cannot be reached as server reaches it automatically refreshes it and now we no longer see any sort of error so now if I check this post by ID cannot return null label field so we are not getting anything because we have already deleted with that ID so let me fetch one all the posts and I'm gonna get this post by this ID so I'm gonna copy this instead this I'm gonna paste that and now we'll run that so I'm gonna get this post by ID and we are getting our post over there so this is how we can access a single post, multi post and a lot of things. So in the next video we will start looking into the validations as well as we will start touching how we can start user authentication and also create the custom directives in our application. But meanwhile I'm just gonna save all the posts and everything over here so that you can look into that uh, for your reference inside the docs this post.gql file is already there with, uh, which has all kind of uh, mutations uh, queries regarding the posts so thank you guys with that all set and we'll catch up in the next video and we'll start looking into the user authentication as well as the access control using the custom directives from the next video series and then later we'll start looking how we can upload the images on the GraphQL server as well as also link it with the post and in the final video, we'll look how we are just gonna deal with the pagination on the GraphQL side. So thank you guys without all that said and happy coding. Hope you enjoy my tutorials and keep spreading the word about and make sure you follow me on social media. We have two, three, we have four groups. One is a GraphQL live. Then we have a Node.js live. Then we have a Vue.js live group and I'm the admin of that group. So just we do a lot of stuff there. So thank you guys.